Hey everybody, I'm the Bat Otter, and before I start the video, if I sound a little bit different, I've had a head cold the past couple days. It's nothing crazy. It's literally a head cold, as well as you can get. A lot of sinus congestion. It's going around town. Anywhere you go, any convenience store, any restaurant, any uh, grocery store, you hear somebody going, <coughs> you hear that? Everybody's got it. Uh, whole town is sick right now, but it's just that it, it, it's just sick enough that it's inconvenient. Uh, not sick enough that you can't do anything. I went to a wedding. I I went to uh, what else did I go to? I did some things over the weekend, and he, I'm I'm still alive, right? So it's not like it's anything crazy. But I wanted to get to Berserk Volume Eleven. I just finished reading it today. I've had it sitting around for a while since before Christmas. The library is probably mad at me for keeping their books for so long. Uh, but the reason it's been lying around so long is because, if you guys couldn't tell in my previous videos, I've been getting a little bit bored of Berserk and the story and the pacing. Because uh, a lot of the fights and the battles and the things that make Berserk so cool are, uh, they, they just don't seem as impactful reading them. And it seems like a lot of fluff and filler and uh, cool artwork, but as I've said before, I mean, I'm not buying art books, well, I'm not buying them, I'm not renting art books, I'm... Try. I want to get invested in the story, and my favorite moments are always moments between uh, Guts and Griffith and Casca and Shiark and Farnes and Serpico, and it seems like a lot of those moments have gotten cheapened over the uh, long-term serialization of the story. There's clearly a point, and it's going somewhere, but it's going there extremely slowly, and I feel like it could skip over a lot of things, unlike before, where every tiny little thing mattered and paid off to another scene. There are still those bigger payoffs, but the smaller ones don't seem as impactful as they used to. And that could just be from storytelling fatigue or what have you. Um, but whatever the case may be, that's my thoughts on it. So here we get to this big old dock battle. And this was really fun. Whenever I started reading it, it reminded me of the 100 swordsman fight. And obviously Guts is a little bit more withered because of his use of the berserker armor. And what I do like and what I still do appreciate about Miura is that he does have that consistency in the injuries. Where if Guts is injured, it's not just like, oh man, I'm super injured and I'm about to die. And then the next chapter, he's kicking butt. No problem. He, the injuries do carry over and they do have consequences uh, to the story. So even though he could easily body all these guys, and it's not too big of an issue, because of the way that the Berserker armor has been wearing at his psyche, as you see here, and at his body, he can't manage as well. It is taxing on him in a way that it wouldn't have been before. So, Shi'ark summons another uh, little super god. They try to move her out of the way, but she's burning, so Guts saves her and Isidro. Uh, we get a lot of panels like this, I've noticed, in this volume. A lot of people looking down at somebody who's just coming to. And lots of carnage, lots of destruction. Really fun, classic berserk stuff. And there's a point to it, because they have to move to the boat. So, all this destruction has reason. I like that. Uh, we get a fight with one of those whale things, uh, I, <laughs> to be honest, I'm skipping some of this stuff, uh, like I said, it's just not that much fun. We get cool shots of the Berserker armor, that's always fun to look at, but, like I said, some of these shots feel really cheap, and almost like fan service, more so than story development. Now, of course, every time the Berserker armor comes out, and he goes haywire, uh, he gets a little bit crazier, he gets a few more screws loose, and in this case, we get to see some of the consequences and some things that move the story forward, like uh, he meets one of these uh, shamans from the Kushan army who summons a, a, a water snake that can create, uh, what are they called, water spouts, uh, Shi'ark tries to stop Guts from going berserk, <laughs> uh, and in doing so, her, her astral body latches on to his, and she gets a glimpse into Guts's torn and crazy psyche. So we get a really cool fight between Guts and these water creatures, because Guts usually cuts things, but you can't cut water. Uh, Serpico joins in the fun, and we get a really nice fight between Guts and this Kushan uh, shaman. The shaman is on equal footing, albeit he's using a Hindu god, so it might be a little unfair. We get really excellent views of ships and boats, and all around a very chaotic and entertaining scene that shows you the level that our characters have grown to in their combat capabilities, and Miura's capabilities as an artist also growing. We get some cool twists of, okay, you have to aim for this spot and do this. The practicality 
behind the magic. There's a lot of magic in media that gets lost in arbitrariness, arbit- arbitration, I'd say, uh, where it's magic to a fault and it doesn't have any rules, it doesn't have any standards, uh, so it makes it very inconsistent. But in this case, every magical being has a weak point. It has this and it has that, and the characters have to figure out a way to exploit that. Uh, so as Guts and Serpico are kicking the shaman's butt, Ganishka gets word of it, and he gets a little bit upset. So what does he do? He strikes Guts with lightning. Shier gets blasted out of his psyche, and we get my favorite version of Guts, and that is him face first on the floor in more than excruciating and unbearable pain. I can't get enough of Guts like that. I really enjoyed this part of Guts getting absolutely blasted left and right, uh, only to barely be saved by the, the, the Dragon Slayer by using it as a literal lightning rod. So they have a little heart-to-heart. Guts realizes Ganishka is not with Griffith, even though he's a very big apostle. And Guts says, hey, you know, um, you're, you're, you're ugly, I don't like you, and uh, you stink. And Ganishka is like, hey, somebody uh, de- defies me. We get a nice cameo from Zod. Uh, who is coming in with the Band of the Hawks initial forces um, to fight. And we get these breathtaking, breathtaking panels, post to post, cover to cover in this book of things that Miura has not illustrated before. Uh, and his his style changes is absolutely incredible. Uh, so Guts is obviously in a, a bad situation um, here, right? We get a flashback between... Zod and uh, the psychic girl uh, Sonia and she's like oh she gives him some vague prophecy and he's like I guess that's what vague prophecies are meant for so now we're here the both of them are underwater Guts gets on his back and we get a little sitcom kind of they need to team up it's like ooh and I love this I love this it says your urge to kill makes my neck bristle in ecstasy I love that guys we need this is all I've been asking for in Berserk Cool interactions like this with fights and battles that contribute to the overall story and add and have narrative purpose. This is all I've been looking for. That's it. Guts and Zod have this weird bond. It's like the bond fighters talk about whenever they go and step in a cage and try to kill each other for three fights. They, they You get that weird bond that you can only get from trying to kill the other and being pretty matched. Uh, and we get a just very burned up destroyed Guts, and Guts says, hey, listen, we can do this, just help me out. We get some really cool panels uh, along the way. Uh, Zod uh, kind of bodies some people, Guts is on the ground, and everybody wants to square up with Zod, and Guts says, hey, you know, you're with Griffith, aren't you? And he says, well, what do you do? Because if that changes things, even if you're crippled, we just mince you into... And we get this ugly, evil, ominous shot of Zod, where he looks like this ugly creature about to tear into you, and this, this stare-down between the two of them, where Guts is as good as dead in this condition he's in. And he's still just... You want the smoke. Serpico acts as a mediator. He says, hey, you're not concerned with a feud, uh, feud between monsters. That's what you said, right? And Guts is like, yeah. And we get classic Guts behavior... Uh, where he falls face first. And I, I love that. I enjoy it. I enjoy seeing our guy Guts in excruciating, unbearable pain. We get some geopolitical conflict accompanied by beautiful and masterful illustrations of battle, medieval battles. Um, but of, it's the Kushan. And I think Muir really, really wet the bed with the Kushan because he always, always would, like, oh, look at the Kushan. Finish it with a, a splash page of them. And he did that so much that it stopped being ominous and it stopped being foretelling and it just became annoying because it was like George R.R. R. Martin's winter is coming. So Griffith shows up with his apostle army, uh, absolutely bodies Ganishka, makes him look like a punk, uh, humiliates him in front of the whole squad, he read The Art of War, and uh, wins the battle for the Midland army. Uh, turns out he's engaged to Princess Charlotte. Big surprise. The nobles are like, hmm, that Griffith boy, you know, I don't like him. Uh, but then Griffith pulls up with the Pope, right? Classic Griffith behavior. Uh, 
And yeah, we get some setup for the incoming story. All in all, I enjoyed everything with Guts, and I think Griffith as a character at this point talks so little and is so predictable that reading him isn't even like reading a character and investing yourself into an individual. It's more like a two-dimensional individual. It's like, oh, but look at all the past. It's like, I don't care about the past. The past is the past. The previous parts in the story are behind us. What is he like right now? And what he's like right now is a very two-dimensional character with very little depth. Uh, and I believe that we'll get more depth from him in the future as they expounded upon some of the other characters in this part here, especially with Guts losing touch with reality because of the armor. Uh, but other than that, I am looking forward to it. It's just a, a slow reads and not as interesting uh, and not as gripping because... Some of the, they, like I said, they just don't have value. Even Ganishka always has the hand over his face writhing in agony, and it, it has no value because it always happens throughout the story. It doesn't really change until it does, and when it does change, it's like, well, you could have just done that once. You see what I'm saying? So, all in all, it's not a bad story. It's just not great, so maybe the bar is too high. But that's my opinion as a reader. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know what you think. I'll be coming at you with many more reviews in the coming future, especially now that I'm recovering from the sick. Uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Be sure to back my book, The Pigeon Queen. It's a short story, eight pages long, with a colored cover and the line work cover, all available through Gumroad. Links are in the description. Be sure to subscribe, like, do all those good things, and I'll see you guys in the next one.